Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're going to talk about self-propelled modular transport or SPMT. So let's dive right into it. Now, why exactly do we have a need for something this complicated? Well, reality is we are making things big and then we are making them even bigger. And at this point in time, almost majority of human engineering is limited by the ability to what can we actually transport. Meaning there are people who are job is to design this sort of truck and they are flat out honest with you. It's like if you ask them, can you make it bigger? It's like, yeah, we can make it, we just can't transport it. So the reality is we are making big, huge things. For example, uh, China has a power plant uh, that is very far away from actual uh, place of consumption. So they have to do what we call HVDC, high voltage DC to transmit that power. Awesome, no problem. It's 12 gigawatt. Meaning, if they wanted to make a single transformer that can take three phase and have three phase output or six phase output for HVDC, uh, yeah, the transformer will be so big that nothing in this plant will be able to carry it. So they have to take a transformer, split it into three, basically uh, one transformer per phase and then transport it. And that applies to almost many things at this point in time. It's like, can you actually transport it? So our dreams are getting bigger and normal trucks, they're just not big enough. Meaning once we standardize on things uh, that are working on what we call container systems, we thought like we, we good, we sorted everything. But here's the, this became too small. And then we're like, what if we use bigger trucks? There are big trucks. This puppy can easily handle 100 plus ton or even hundreds of ton. So what's the problem? Well, here's the, if you drive this puppy on a road directly, uh, it will not drive on the road. It will drive away the road. Basically, the road will go bye-bye. So for fundamental reasons, there are certain limits. We cannot, uh, these trucks are not big enough. These things are too destructive for roads. So we need something in between that has like, you know, advantages of both of them. And uh, again, be mindful. At this point in time, many things are limited by the fact that we cannot actually transport it. We can make it even bigger, even bolder, even grander. We, if we can't transport it, there is no point in it, right? I mean, like if you ever wondered why the heck offshore wind farms are so huge, that's the reason we can just transport it easily. Here, uh, we are limited if we have to transport on roads. So logic was created is that if you can dump the weight over a large surface area equally, problem is solved. Like physics allows you to do that. Like you can have 100 tons of like concentrated load, 100 tons spread up, uh, across multiple contact patches of multiple of wheels. It will reach a point where it's safe for roads. Actually, it will become even gentler than any other normal heavy truck system. So mathematics work. It's almost like how tank continuous track systems work. Uh, that's why tank does not uh, like get bogged down into uh, you know uh, situation where other normal wheels uh, will get stuck. Of course, there is an upper limit to that. You cannot make 150 ton tank and just have it tread and it's just gonna be like you lower it. There are limits to it, but you have to understand. We learned from that and then we are doing the same thing. Basically, the benefit of a track with wheels. Now, why we use wheels rather than tracks? Well, wheels gives us flexibility and independence. Meaning, if um, we want to rotate each of the wheels independently, we can do that. If you want to attach modular part, basically join things together, we can do that. You can't do that with track systems. If each of them have to have a different angle of radius, basically turning radius, so to give a very gentle curve, you can't do that with threads. Threads are limited and they have to be designed from day one. Like this is one thing, this is what it can do, done, go home. So we don't want that. We want independence of field and that's the whole aspect, modular. You can just attach as many as you need. Three, four, six, eight. You can go YOLO on it. That's the whole point. Like each small module is independent and then you can attach it to larger modules and to make it as large as you need to. Or as uh, basically depending on your requirement, you will design it. A lot of wheel uh, wheels, basically if you have hundreds of wheels, if your wheel count is like 400, 500, 600, you can carry almost anything on normal roads. They will not crush under uh, your weight, basically. Unless like, of course, there is a physics limit. You cannot carry like, you know, uh, something that is made out of, let's say, osmium. There is a limit to that. Like, of course, you, if this whole block was made out of osmium, yeah, there is upper limit to it. But realistically, right now, we can transport anything if you have enough wheels on it. I mean, like, even bridge sections can be transported on normal roads because they dump the weight around so many wheels, hundreds of wheels in two pairs. That's like, road is like, I got this. So that's the logic behind it. So how do we drive so many wheels? Well, hydraulics, because we need a lot of torque. You are talking about like seriously, idiotically large amount of torque and you need precision, meaning it's not just like horsepower. You need very fine control power because here's deal. If something that has like 600 wheels, is going around a corner, each wheel requires a different RPM. And if you do not do that, the drag on each uh, wheel could literally destroy the tire and you have hundreds of ton on top of it. So uh, one or two burst tire would be bad enough. If you have 15, 16 burst tire every time you turn, good luck. So 
for that reason we need lot of torque and precision precision so good that we can say rotate at 5 uh, rpm rotate at 5.3 rpm rotate at 6 rpm rotate at 12 rpm we need that like smooth gradient the only way we can achieve that is hydraulic uh, variable drive systems because generally they utilize swash plate and Controlling the angle of source plate gives you the RPM control and changing the angle gives you like clockwise or anti-clockwise Meaning you can have forward and reverse without any issue. It's very soft very gentle And you're also used for jacking basically if you're building uh, any Industrial structure you want to reduce number of unique things basically if you are using jacking generally you're going to use hydraulic So why not use the hydraulic for drive also? So the more things you do with hydraulic the simplified your structure gets it's just like you have electrical for control uh, Basically valve control and all that just again not even valve control more of like you know valve detection It's like is the valve in this position? Yes or no? So and then you will have another drive hydraulics that will drive the main thing and electronic will just study it So everything is done by hydraulics steering leveling everything as you can see like generally you put your stuff basically transformer you'll put them on the jacks then you will drive under it jack yourself up carry the load remove the temporary jacks and then carry it forward so that requires it and you can see that like this is every axle can do this that's why i said like you need very precise control on this motor that is doing that and you need a very large amount of torque like think of this like you have hundreds of ton on top of you so each of the axle is carrying a significant amount of load so it has to turn while under load and each of them has to turn a different amount if you have 600 wheels going around a turn each axle has to compensate mathematically precise like ah i think this axle should be one degree this should be 1.5 degree this one 1.6 degrees like literally you have to do it across every axle so hydraulics is the only way we can achieve this like this is mind-boggling that we can somehow make this work and i've provided a video down below like if you want to see exactly precisely how this hydraulic system works I've provided. it's used in forklift but again i could not find somebody that is showing how exactly in this they work but principle is the same as the piping is a bit different uh, because the dumb pipings are what we classify as they give you 180 degree rotation smart, uh, smart one is like 270 uh, better ones is almost 360 meaning of course they will not do free spin but they can do almost free spin so that's the hydraulic part of it everything is hydraulic in this system you can have a diesel uh, power plant providing power to hydraulic pump then driving this or you can have electric battery powering electric motor then uh, powering the basically hydraulic pump but it will always be hydraulically powered nothing else suit this exact requirement and uh, there is a reason why we have electric power system because many factories rather than building cranes they are investing into this system because again crane requires a parallel structure that is tall tall structures are expensive if you can just lift them from the bottom you already paid for the soil basically you already paid for the soil the construction that is on the soil to give you strength might as well use it so for indoor use those things are also becoming very desirable for uh, rather than using cranes you are just using uh, you know modular transports so that's the hydraulic aspect of it then we come to the road part those hydraulic systems they are good they are powerful but they are slow meaning if you have to transport like huge things long distance uh, they will take years because the maximum speed is around two kilometers per hour so fundamentally we need something that adds more power to spmt small modular uh, transport units so for adding speed and braking power because you have to understand you can have something that is like like a transformer this is one of the densest thing they generally carry it is such a enough concentration mass even if you apply brakes is just gonna fly slide so you need something that can absorb that kind of impact so special trucks are designed for that now these trucks have one uh, or two core motive uh, changes first changes is their chassis is designed reinforced in such a way that can carry heavy tonnage meaning same model you can take from like we mercedes be it man company same model would literally have uh, if it's designed for braille structure role it will be like you know uh, rather than 10 ton it will be 60 ton like it has to have a chassis that can handle that kind of abuse and the gearbox is designed to be going down like the uh, rpm engine is going full rpm but your uh, wheel rpm is very low so it's designed for traction not for torque traction basically it has to have grip and they are added based on mission meaning uh, the modular transport if you are transporting from a very small distance like let's say in a factory they are good enough but if you are transporting over the roads the transporter would be your main bulk carrier and this will be the speed provider meaning uh, that will only go to like you know uh, 10 20 km per hour that's if you have very light load if you have anything like that uh, it will be lucky if you can get even two or three kilometers per hour this the moment you add this you can go up to 40 50 km per hour of course your fuel cost will be like all, but you can do it and sometimes speed matters enough where they're at it and you may not only have oh, one in front you may have one in back also to provide braking power assistance and turning control all that requires calculation before the mission gets started meaning is this one truck enough sometimes you will see literally one truck in front two trucks in back sometimes you will say two trucks in front one in back sometimes four trucks 
a lot of trucks have to be done and sometimes they have chain of trunks because if it's too heavy and they need speed more than they need control they will have like you know serialized these things so ballast tractor is the final uh, you know piece that allows you to do like actually carry these sort of things at any reasonable speed because we might well when they are going through the road road is blockade that adds cost to the company that is doing the shipping so it's in their best interest and interest of the public that these sort of things get cleared out as quickly as possible it's like tea done go home ideally at night nobody notices it it's just like something goes from here nobody uh, gets affected by it like this was done on an open highway and you can see the i brought a video down below it's like wow <laughs> it's like it's, it's, these things are so huge they make bus look like a toy so understand that like this sort of thing causes serious block it so you have to be very efficient with your speed then we come to the most expensive part of this system crew because here's the uh, the way uh, documentaries uh, describe them is like tough men with dedicated fingers uh, basically very delicate fingers because when you see them working on this sort of uh, controllers box it's like it's almost unperceptible like how little they move it and how much this puppy moves it's like it is a skill set it's not something that you can train to everyone of course you can train them, oh this which and they will be able to do it can they do it while they have hundreds of ton of load on it that's a different thing like when you have multiple and see like how each uh, wheel access is uh, reacting differently that's what you cannot do with treads so you have to use wheels and you have to be wise enough to understand okay these wheels are turning properly these are turning properly that is not turning properly those are turning properly. you have to see that because again at the end of the day this is equipment it could have failure it could have malfunction it's your job at that point in time that if there is a malfunction in any of this system to stop the transport because again stopping the transport it will hurt but damaging the transport will destroy your company so fundamentally it takes a lot of preparation work like seriously large amount of preparation work before you even launch it your launching could be just as quickly as like hey five to six hour transfer from let's say a dock to a power plant it could be very f uh, few hours but here's the just to achieve that you will have almost a year of planning sometimes and especially if you have like a lot of bridges to go over or underpasses to clear or a lot of turnings people will actually go there study like every meter they will take uh, photographs there they will do 3d scanning of their if needed to figure out like can we clear this for example the video that i have shown there they are moving the transport truck they had to move the uh, basically signal um, lights they had to move it 90 degrees again that area was like going through this so common the signal was designed in such a way that it can be moved but you have to understand that you have to pay for it you have to be the one responsible for it if you destroy it damage it there would be serious fine so it's a very like you may think these things are expensive they are they are not cheap but here's the this looks free compared to the people who are qualified enough to handle this and that's why whenever you type uh, this uh, protocol uh, system you will only find one or two companies their primary reason there are many companies in india in china in everywhere but the having the crew that are skilled enough to do this it's very rare it's not like you will be shocked like how much intelligence it takes that and even the drivers who are doing this they're saying like a lot of we, we get a lot of people joining in because there's a lot of serious pay into that like big money then why don't they stick around it's tedious stressful like it's it's on a different level of stress that you imagine so a lot of pre uh, preparation work and you need group skill you cannot be just like oh this person is responsible no 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 that's just one cog of a large system you will have other coordinators you will have other person who's like hey i'm the one lead vehicle i am the one who's like detect anything if there is any fault any damage any accidents anything i am the one who has to you know send the signal to stop before they end up in too high speed and stopping because literally risk the cargo they have to like there is a lot of blind faith into them and again they will flat out tell you it's like dude the lead truck I'm not responsible for everything. The, the person ahead of me that's responsible for that. I'm responsible for this area. The trucks in behind, they cannot see it. They physically cannot see it. So they're like, I'm just trusting that they're giving me good instruction and I have to trust that. Like it's a very surprisingly miracle thing that humans can actually do this. Like it takes multiple people, years of experience to build up to this level where we can just move hundreds of tons of object like eh, yeah minor inconvenience but we can move it and uh, flat out these are the final limitations of humanity it's like can we actually move it we cannot do this with air there is no helicopter there is no plane that can carry thousand ton or five thousand ton or fifty thousand ton uh, so there are certain limits and that's why like large things are only built on uh, sea for example like uh, offshore wind farms we can go like really large you can't transport it on land like and again because of the the fact you can carry the weight does not mean you can just carry it any incline any slope there is a limitation of the slopes also so if you have too much slope it will literally crash so that's also another limiting factor so crew is the reason why this whole system is not uh, as easy as you may think you may be like hey i'm building this power plant you may have all the money sorted but the moment you're like hey a generator is being manufactured by let's say siemens siemens are like yeah generator is 1000 ton super easy to transport on these things but the crew is preoccupied for that good luck there are only few companies that can transport it so you have to plan that part out 
and that's why when I was talking about uh, carbon dioxide turbine, that was so uh, important that it can be fit inside a container. It's important. Otherwise, like shipping this sort of things takes time. And like shipping itself could take me like, you know, one day or two days, but uh, like shipping process could take me one year. So crew is the final cog in the wheel. Without this crew, like world will literally stop. We'll literally not have any big generators, any big steam plants. Majority of industry will not work to the scale and efficiency that we have achieved at this point in time. They are very important people who just work behind the scenes. So this was my presentation on modular transporters. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends, that will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.